My name is Ed Nardi, Chair of the Natural Resources Commission, and I am calling this public meeting to order at 7 p.m. Tonight's NRC meeting will be a hybrid in-person and Zoom meeting. We have a microphone set up on the Commission table, and plans will be projected through the TV monitor. If you are presenting via Zoom, please turn on your audio and microphone when it is your time to speak. Following the presentation by the petitioner and questions from the Commission, members of the public will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment. Please identify yourself with name and address for the record. You can also raise your hand from your phone by dialing star nine and use star six to unmute. All video screens will be turned off with the exception of the commissioners, Delia, and the current petitioner. Once the commission has acted on, this app, on an application, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. In the event of any technical difficulties, all matters on the agenda that have not been heard will be automatically continued to the December 7th mm -hmm. meeting. At this time, I would ask the commissioners to introduce themselves. Sarah? Sarah Grimwood. Nick? Nick Pappas. Gary? Gary Kleiman. And Bill? Uh, Bill Kermesa. Thank you all. All right, jumping into the agenda. I think we're going to hold on approving meeting minutes for this session. And uh, next up is Nick no comments. Anybody have any comments, specific or general? Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll move to the director's update. Uh, so a couple of things. Um, we are holding the assistant natural resources director interviews second round this week. And we hope to have somebody on board by mid-December. Um, CPA applications update. Um, I did present uh, additional information to CPC last night on the two applications that we've submitted. One was the open space and recreation plan update that we're seeking $100,000 in funds for a consultant to help us with that. They wanted a little bit more information and also um, some more information on the Warner's Pond um, dredging project. And as I mentioned to the commission in September, um, you know, as you know, we, we've been working on this since 2012 uh, with the Warner's um, Pond Watershed Management Plan, recommending dredging as the most feasible alternative. So we sort of went through that process, um, including uh, a dredging feasibility study in 2018 that did some sediment sampling and identified locations that would give the biggest bang for the buck. Um, cost estimates were developed in 2018. It was about two, 2.5 million. And then uh, when we went through the permitting process last year for order of conditions with the commission, um, section 401 and chapter 91 with the EP um, and uh, an Army Corps permit under um, federal regulations, um, we had additional cost estimates developed and they were closer to three, but we did put it out for bid in um, August. We got bids back in September. We received one bid. Um, it was 9.5 million, <laughs> which was partly um, due to COVID costs, um, labor shortages, inflation, um, sediment disposal costs. But I think partly it was also, it was just one bid. So there was not, you know, a lot of times you get these outliers. Um, so the application was submitted, CPC's deadline was the, the next week. So I put in an application for basically revisiting how we approach this project. Um, and um, so the application was to, really to, to evaluate this. Um, and um, since that time, I've been working with a consultant, um, trying to get them on board to evaluate the two options that we had talked about at the first CPC site meeting, I mean, um, public meeting, which was to do um, one of two options. And I'm going to, um, let me see if I can just share my screen here. Uh, well, there's two options, and one would be to, um, instead of removing all the sediments from the pond, and that was the initial plan, was to remove all the sediments from 
not uh, this is Warner's Pond here, and it goes down to uh, the dam here. This is Commonwealth Ave here, and Lawsburg Road is down here. So the initial plan was to basically from the public boat launch dredge an area um, that was kind of in this vicinity and um, also up by the recently acquired row parcel and then dewater those sediments over here. And then once they were dewatered, the prison was willing to accept them as compost and they would have been trucked over to the prison farm over here. Um, when the bids came back, we decided to talk to the, you know, figure something else out. I mean, nine million is obviously prohibitively expensive. Even if it came back at six, that still seems unacceptably high. Yeah. Um, so the initial, and this is very conceptual, the initial proposal is to um, basically dredge the blue areas of the pond uh, here. So Scout Island is here. And then deposit those dredge sediments in the northwest cove here, as well as the southwest cove here. And that would reduce the size of the pond and create, you know, some nice um, emergent wetlands um, and still allow for um, uh, pond paddling. You would be able to get around Scout Island. Um, it would be, you know, much deeper than it is now. It's obviously impassable now for any canoeing. Um, so that's one option. And the second option would be to remove the dam here, the historic pail factory dam. Um, and those are two very, very different um, ideas from what we had initially talked about from the very beginning. And so as part of this process that I'm going to be working with a consultant with over the winter, um, there would be a robust public discussion about that. Um, and so what I've asked CPC is to fund, right now we've got 2.5 million appropriated and set aside both in CPC monies as well as um, capital. So that 2.5 million has already been appropriated and I'm seeking an additional 500,000 from CPC. And I'm also asking for 500,000 from um, capital to see if you know either one of these approaches would work. We have very, very preliminary cost estimates. The dam removal would be 2.3 million and relocating all these sediments would be 3.9. Hmm. So, what I would like to do and what I was talking with CPC last night about was, you know, basically setting this money aside as we have done with past requests um, when we were asking for construction funding for this initial dredge or original dredging proposal. Um, get that public feedback, get that in advance of town meeting and decide on a path forward. Um, I should mention that the no action alternative is also going to be evaluated. Um, that is going to mean that the ponds is, you know, it's eutrophying. It will continue to do so. Um, if no, no action is taken, then the pond will slowly fill in. Um, so, so those are uh, being evaluated. The CBC did have a lot of questions about the moving pieces of not really knowing where the funding would go but it would all go to funding construction of either the, you know, or, or I call it construction, but costs to do the work to either remove the dam or do the um, sediments moving around the pond. Would you hmm. expect to have that worked out for town meeting to a recommendation, the, including the discussions? That's okay. the plan. Okay. Good. That's the plan. Good lesson. Yeah. <laughs> so, Delia, that uh, the removing of the dam is that a permanent removal of the dam, or is it? Yeah. Uh, would be. So it would be a permanent removal of the dam, which would restore Neshoba Brook to its original riverine yes. condition. Yeah. Um, as part of what I'm asking the consultant to look at, it would be: Can you still canoe in Neshoba Brook? Can you fish? Can you, you know, are there recreational activities that will still be? Hmm. A, a, possible under that scenario. 
um, the limits of the show of, of, of Warner's Pond. All that pond is conservation land. Mm. Um, what happens to the land once the the brook is restored? Mm. That's going to be modeled. Mm. So is it wetland? Is it floodplain? Is it upland? And if it if it is, you know, under how how is it managed? So it. Does it have the drawdown possibility? You have, is that is that a dam have a drawdown possibility? Yeah, I mean it does have a drawdown possibility. Not much with silting. Does that help with the? You know. So the 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 mate no, it doesn't. I mean that that's the major problem is the the amount of sediments mm -hmm. that pond is a couple of feet deep right yeah. now. Yeah, who who is jurisdiction over the dam? Is it a um, state so, or is it more local? Um, so public, it's public works that has ownership of the dam oh, okay. um, but office of dam safety you know reviews it for its um condition and public works has to submit a report every three years but the, stating, town, but the town could vote for its removal and yes. in other words the town has control over that right oh that's right. important yes yeah. for sure and and so this public process would be not only you know getting all of the community input but you know the stakeholders so public works i've already talked with them and they sort of say you know it's a dam and dams are maintenance mm -hmm. and they can be catastrophic failures in massive storm events and so very preliminary conversations i mean it, i don't think they would have an issue um with a dam rule except the it was replaced less than 20 years ago mm. and at, at substantial cost. Yeah. So that's, you know, I mean, that's a consideration that the town would need to yeah. I would think another take into account. Another consideration is what is the impact on the Jarrell land? You know, yeah. the town has just made a significant investment right. Right. in the Jarrell land. And does that become upland, as you say, instead of, you know, Or does it become front? swamp that yeah. you can't, like, you know, you, you get to the edge of the Jarrell land, there's a steep drop off and then what? Mm. Yeah. Um, so it 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 would, I mean, if the dam was removed, you wouldn't be able to, you know, there there was talk. I think there's less talk, but I think there's still some interest in the potential for swimming off Jero, mm -hmm. but at least paddling and you know recreational programs. So recreation would be at the table. Yeah. Boy Scout Islands, you know, what does that look like? Yeah. You know, so the Boy Scouts of America, you know, we have a contact with them. They. They've been invited to all the public discussions and they would continue to be. Um, so it was a, an interesting discussion um, with CPC because it's a little, you know, it's it's complicated. And, yeah. and um, yeah. but we have had a lot of public support. Town meeting has approved this um, on many occasions in terms of funding. Um, and, um, you know, there's been a lot of public discussion up to this point and it certainly isn't something that's you know i feel staff or mm -hmm. 10 people or you know it, this needs to be a community discussion oh, yeah. on, on yeah, yeah. what happens to respond yeah. so. so the transportation must have been a huge driver of that bid yes. yep. right yep In gasoline terms of just costs moving and... all the material to from drying to the right permanent home etc right? right because that's Nine and a half million. And you discovered there was a limit to how much they can move per day. Oh, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. And that's right. Yeah. There was a limit on, so the prison can only accept into their facility three trucks. Yeah. Uh, it was something <laughs> very, very limited. Like 50 trucks a day to be efficient or something. Like yeah. Once it gets going. I mean, you're talking you're about a thousand truck it. trips because yeah. it was originally going to be 35,000 yards of material. Yeah. 30,000 that was transported. There was going to be a wetland shelf that was that's constructed right. on yeah, that's this, right. you know, yeah. north side of um, of uh, Scout Island. So that's super inefficient too, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of right. piecing it together. Right, right. Mm. So uh, that um, remains to be seen where that um, where that ends up. Um, I, I'm not. I don't have in front of me the schedule for CPC, but they'll be recommending in December or. You know, before January, before the yeah. warrant closes, what you know projects they recommend for uh, town meeting approval. Uh, and just the last thing is that the town is uh, hosting 
its hazard mitigation plan update. Uh, a meeting is scheduled for November 30th, and um, that is by Zoom, and that is um, a meeting for the town to assess and reduce its vulnerability to natural hazards such as flooding, hurricanes, winter storms. Um, and it is an update to the prior plan, um, but we're you know trying to get as many people from the public to come and you know give their thoughts on that meeting. So that is Wednesday, November thirtieth, from seven to eight, and it's Zoom. If you want information on that, just let me know. Thank you, Dewey. Thank you. Lots to do. Uh, question for you: Application withdrawn. Is that just a note? Uh, do we no no action necessary? There's the no question? action necessary. The applicant has chosen to withdraw that application and proceed with an amendment to the prior approved um, application. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to our first new application this evening, um, and that is the uh, request for determination of applicability, Town of Concord. RDA file number 22-16. And let's see, is Jeff with us this evening? Jeff is with us. Ah, come on up, Jeff. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Thanks for finally with you. Likewise. A year, and I haven't been before the <laughs> <laughs> here you go. <laughs> come on down. All right. So I think we it's, it's like a fairly, I think just a general overview. Really straightforward. It is fairly straightforward. It's a uh, water main replacement project. Uh, the project will be taking place within the uh, public rights of way of the Butternut um, neighborhood streets, uh, Butternut, Minot, uh, Black Duck, uh, Fox, Fox Lane. Uh, it's approximately 4,000 linear feet. The main size is eight inch and it's a 1950s vintage asbestos cement water main pipes. So that's um, that vintage and that material type has been known to be problematic to the town and is prone to uh, break risk. And we're also trying to coordinate uh, work that we do with the engineering division who plans the road uh, roadway improvements project so that we're doing a project ahead of the roads paving program so that we're not tearing up a brand new paved road. So we're coordinating that effort, uh, assisting Public Works Water and Sewer Division is uh, the consulting engineering firm, Environmental Partners, and Lauren Underwood is with us from Environmental Partners, and she can speak to the application and to any details or any questions you may have on the design. And, and when do you plan on doing the work? Is it 23? It, it would be 23. Uh, given the it, it's I don't I don't know what you hear about the construction industry, but sometimes construction materials are very hard to come by. So we've actually uh, done a number of things to try to expedite the process, but we've also done materials procurement separate so that we ordered water main piping, which will be ductile iron water main piping, bends, fittings, hydrants, valves, uh, service tubing, curb stops, and so forth. So we'll be getting, we've already gotten some of those materials shipped to us and we've yet to, to receive the pipe, but the plan is to get the material shipped to us ahead of the project so that we will hopefully be constructing at the beginning of the construction season mm. in calendar 23. Okay. Um, I just, I just, I, it's it's out of our purview, but I just had one question about the asbestos pipe, mm -hmm. just, just for my edification or general edification in terms of it, it's, how how do you guys track that that stays in the ground, right? And then, I, I, you know, 25 years from now, there's some street work's got to be done. And, you know, somebody goes out and excav excavates the street and, you know, there's the old pipe and they might not know it's old pipe. And I, I just don't, I just don't know how sure. that works. Well, we have a um, archive library of both service connections as well as mains. Uh, so we know where mains are, what main diameters are, what years they were installed. Uh, so we will have records that this main is remaining abandoned in place. I see. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. So we, we'll have a record and log of that. And certain amounts of asbestos cement pipe will have to be removed in order to make the interconnections between the new pipe and the old pipe piping system. Would Dick Safe also have a record of that? Well, we are when uh, the 811 Dick Safe is called, we receive that call. So we're a member community of Dick Safe. So when someone goes to call a Dick Safe, it would be water and sewer personnel that it's going out to mark out materials and locations <clears throat> in the in the street. Is there an as built plan that's done at the end of this? Yes, there would be. And would that show the abandoned in place line? Uh, yes, it would. And ah, Lauren, yeah. Lauren can confirm that, but that would be my expectation. Yes, that'll be provided. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. My pleasure. Um, any other questions from the commission or not really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to the public. Any any questions, comments from the public? Are you seeing anybody do that? I am not. All right. I think we have a recommendation. Gary, you want to take that on? Um, well, there was one question about erosion controls at the end of the black duck cul-de-sac. Ah, yeah. I don't know if we wanted to just ask if that could be relocated down gradient of the proposed curb stops and the hydrant removals. We did get than... revised plans showing that. Okay, so yeah. the, that's already been, so yeah. We so. did get that in the 25 foot notice to its own waiver. Those okay. were provided. Great. And um, if nobody else, uh, do you want to do public comment or? I did. We did. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, I would move to um, close an issue. Um, let's see, for RDA number 22 16, Town of Concord, uh, close an issue, a positive uh, 2B determination. Uh, not approving the resource area boundaries and a negative determination three for work in the buffer zone with the following conditions. One, pre-construction site visit shall be held with the applicant, DNR staff, and the contractor to review erosion controls, silt stacks, and limits of work. Two, after the project has been completed, uh, applicant shall submit a letter to the NRC stating that all work has been conducted in accordance with the conditions of this determination of applicability. Any changes from the RDA should be described. Second. Thank you, Sarah. I will take the vote. Bill? Aye. Gary? Aye. Nick? Aye. Sarah? Aye. I am aye as well. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Lauren. My pleasure. Good Thank luck you. with the project. Thank you. Hope you get all the materials timely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank Bye. You. Good night. All right. Moving on to the next applications uh, Concord Public <laughs> Schools, 120 Merriam Road. NOI file number 137-1619. And we have... Good yeah. evening, James. Good evening. All uh, right, Jim Basile, Gold Smith Press and Ringwall. All right, I think, I, again, another, I think, relatively straightforward project. If you want to just touch on it, that would be, that would be appreciated. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so, um, on behalf of the applicant, uh, the Concord Public School, uh, we prepared a notice of intent for the property at 120 Merriam Road. Um, uh, public school is looking to redevelop uh, the exterior walkway throughout the um, area around the public school, the courtyard, and associated access and utilities. Um, but the purpose of the notice of intent is to cover the uh, portion of the existing walkway that runs through the uh, buffer zone of the wetlands. Um, the wetlands were delineated this past June by Matt Morrow, and um, the existing walkway is about um, four or five feet at its closest from the wetland. Um, and it's uh, kind of just in a uh, poor state. It's starting to, uh, the walkway is starting to crumble, crack, and kind of heave in areas. So um, the school is looking to uh, remove the existing walkway and replace it. Um, it's just going to be replaced in kind, though. So um, no clearing of brush or trees is proposed, no encroachment to wetlands, and um, grades will remain the same, so drainage patterns are anticipated to be the same. Um, we're also proposing straw wattle erosion control on the down gradient side of the walkway um, to protect the resource area. 
And we have heard back from um, the state. We've received a DEP file number. And um, their only real comment was um, regard to uh, natural heritage, because you will see that there is um, a call on the left side of the page for a line type um, NHESP priority habitat for rare species. So basically the area of the walkway within the buffer zone is um, within that rare habitat area. But we have heard back from um, Division of Fisheries and uh, Wildlife um, and they've uh, given the okay that the current project um, will not adversely affect the actual resource area habitat of the rare species. So they're okay with that. Um, yeah, and aside from replacing the existing walkway, um, there's three bollards over by um, Ridgeway Road at the top of the page. Um, those will be removed and replaced at the time of uh, the installation of the new walkway. But uh, that's uh, just a general overview of that. But if you guys have any questions or comments, I'd be more than happy to address those. Thank you. Um, any any comments from the commission? I'm just interested. Do we know the rare species? Just out of interest, that's protected there. Uh, let me check the letter. I don't know if we didn't do send the letter. And um, don't worry if you don't know off the top of your head. This one, just intrigued. Probably landings. Okay. So we're yeah. to, yeah. Right next to the uh, swamp, right? Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, I, yep. Just one. I'm noticing that the staging area is right between the 50 and the 100. Is there a reason that the staging area and materials can't be sort of outside the 100? Just, I don't know whether, I mean, what kind of materials are going to be staged there? Is that where it could be? So, um, you know, there'll be small machines that'll be, you know, kind of uh, oh. installing the walkway and it's all, you know, nice grass out there. So trying to like minimize the disturbance while having the most direct access to the walkway itself um, that was seen as the ideal location to access the area without um, you know causing any more disturbance than necessary. Yeah. All right. And just out of curiosity, what 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 is the walkway made out of? What's being replaced with in this? Oh just bituminous. It is being replaced with a uh, bituminous walk. Um, I do have some pictures that um, are in the notice of intent that I can share of what it looks like currently, but uh, or I don't know if um, you have the NOI available to pull out the picture. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, we're 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 probably pretty good. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, any public comment regarding this application? No. Okay. Seeing none, I think we do have a order of conditions. Yes. So. Um, I make a motion to close the hearing and for 120 Miriam Road, which is NOI file 1371619, and issue an order of conditions um, with findings A and B, standard conditions 1 through 20, and special conditions 21 through 51. Yes, Steve. Um, I just uh, need to add the finding about the rare species, um, but there's no significant impact. Usually I put in a finding that says yep. um, that they've opined and there's, you know, I put in the date of their correspondence. I neglected to do that for this one. So I just two findings. Okay. Yep. So there's findings A, B, and C, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Second. Thank you, Gary. And we'll take the vote. Bill? Aye. Gary? Aye. Nick? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And I am an I as well. Thank you all. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are moving on to 59 Walden Street. Uh, NOI file number 137-1618. Good evening, Rich. Good evening, how are you? Very good. Thank you. You, you're welcome to join, but yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I sent a presentation email. I'm not sure. Um, Did? Just sent one before the meeting, but you can use what's on file. Uh, good evening, Rich Harrington from Harrington Associates, Engineer Chris Hill, E.D. Hill, and um, Frank from the applicant and the future owners of the property, current owners of the property, and Mark Lionetta, um, as far as the 
is also in the audience. Um, we are here to discuss 59 Walden Street, and it's an existing property, which this commission has seen back in 2006. And as built was performed, and order, order conditions is perpetual, instructing the current owners how to maintain the maintenance of the drainage facilities that was approved by the previous commission. That is the as built plan from 2007, which was a requirement of the last order of conditions issued by the commission. It shows on the bottom of the page, Walden Street, there is a bank that was constructed about in the late 1950s. It's next to the old veterans building and it's within the limited business district for this specific property. There's about eight of them in town. And it sounds like that my observation is they tweaked and adjusted all the knobs and everything they could possibly could to adjust and blend out of one district into the other. So it's harmonious with the abutters, which is that two stories of residential dwelling on the right hand side. What this shows is, and it's, it's a one and a half story existing building. The criteria for parking spaces in this district is 20 spaces. So for every 250 square feet on every floor in that building footprint, we need one space. So we need 19.2, so you round up to 20 spaces. That's why you see 20 spaces in the backyard on that 2007 plan. When that was updated by TD Bank North before they moved over to West Concord, they had to update and provide a sidewalk up the left-hand side, and the compensation was that archway on the top of the edge of the pavement, which was a stone trench. And the green that's shown is a little bit of a berm, a grass berm of a three-inch lip, so that mm -hmm. all the water that flows in the back of the parking lot, it's stopped by that berm and settles into the stone trench. Mm -hmm. That is the area that we're required to maintain and refresh and make sure there's no leaf litter in there. When that was done, there was a catch basin there with a pipe that went into the wetlands directly. So that was removed. So this site has already been scrubbed, cleaned, and fixed and improved many times. So it's difficult to be the third one in line saying, what can you do better, Rich, after Al Easterday and all those that taught you back about in 2006, over 14 years ago, uh, what's important about your buffer zones. So. What they also required was those two existing trees and those about eight to 10 shrubs that required to be planted. And now uh, just above that green is a little bit shadow that that is now a stump. So what we're observing in the current conditions is the purplish bridge that's up to the top left in that picture mm -hmm. that goes over from Walton Street to the church, our butter. And what's happening is the water is backing up and it's exceeding higher than the bank full conditions of the of the of Mill Brook. And so you're seeing some seasonal flooding in that area between the, the highlighted blue and the green berm. So that there is some backing up of water. So as we talk about plantings or the landscaping plan, there's some seasonal areas where that grass are you area is that that is it's a it's an impediment to the flow, that bridge. Not saying the bridge or down there's a series of some things. Uh, it does back up with the bridge, it's flowing any there. There was some other rocks that fell down, and then you have the underpass underneath Main Street. So what I'm saying is the behavior, we watched the behavior of the stream to find out what was adequate for improving the area, which is one of our criteria. And then the client is also tasked us to try to look at what we can do as far as improving the drainage around the building as well. So as we move forward, you know, we'll show you that area on the next page. Um, so what we're looking to do is our current proposal is no change to that edge of pavement. We're proposing to refresh the stone trench. So this is the existing conditions. So we're required to, we update our survey base information from Paul Campbell. They lowered the floodplain line. So what you're seeing from the top right is you have Millbrook. You have the triangle on the right-hand side, which is the green. That's your bordering vegetated wetlands. You can scroll down a little bit, Dale, you just show the top of the page or zoom out just one click. That area that's like highlighted, uh, that is up to the, that's the area that is inundated by water, you know, above the, the, the bank that was delineated by Dave Crossman. So that area there is a staining mark on the bridge, which I had them locate by survey and the, the labels are just above. So that area there, as we move forward, that's where now that tree that you approved before is now a stump 14 years later. So we just want to take some care in that area as far as what plantings you're looking to do and propose in that area. I think that area gets wet. 
Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's a hundred year flood. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah I totally agree. I mean, it's yeah. oh, it's just normal normal flows. It, it's it yeah, varies. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, um, and then all of a sudden it's down in inside the the bank and it's you know no issues there. So what I'm doing basically want to call out is basically after observing for over a year that area, just want to make sure that we when we do proposal plantings in there, or yeah, there is a stone trench yeah. there. I mean, in in the paved riprap from above, so. The entire blue area that you see is the current floodplain line. It extends in, you'll see that every parking space that's there today and what will be there tomorrow is in the floodplain. Yeah. So we're charged with doing the best we can to mm -hmm. not, we can't fill floodplain. So to the extent that we can remove pavement a little bit and work with planning and, and the ZBA to maybe um, reorganize some spaces or move the pavement away from the edge of the brook, we're certainly willing to do that. And we've begun discussing that with staff involving Delia. Yeah. Um, the driveway on the right hand side is driveway in. The driveway you loop around counterclockwise. And then all the pink areas around the building and the sidewalk, that's basically general landscape areas or where you, your AC units are or other typical plantings around the building. So we're charged with keeping a sidewalk along the driveway on the exit on the left hand side. We have front steps at the primary entrance along Walden Street, and then we have a handicap ramp that meanders its way up through the front. Mm -hmm. On the right hand side, there's stairs going down to the basement, and those will be changed out for a side porch on the right hand side. So, in overview, they're proposing to convert this from a bank that is no longer a community meter asset in this area to a professional office. They're adding a second story but they're not increasing or expanding the footprint of that building. That building is only in the riverfront area, the footprint of the building. It's outside the buffer zone, it's outside the inner 100 riparian zone, and it's outside the floodplain. It just extends up to the edge of the back door entry, that little vestibule in the back. So as we move forward, any additions or plantings and things of that nature around the building or improvements to side entrances or improvements per the building code for the architect is all in the, just in the outer 100 feet of the riverfront area. Um, in addition, there's a historic, historically the basement has a sump pump. It has flooded on occasions if there's a you know, power outage or something like that. So we'll be adding a generator right behind in that pink area right behind the building outside the floodplain. And so that's, that's the overview of the resource areas and what's there on the ground today. And if you scroll down to the next page, Delia, Thank you. <laughs> this is our site plan, which gives you the overview of your 25 foot. You know, you have your shade edge of river, Millbrook, the yeah. one line, the stone trench that was required from the last commission in a couple of the parking spaces are currently in the 25 foot no disturb zone, which wasn't in effect the last time this was issued by the commission. You see your 50 foot with some additional spaces in part of the, the travel lane to turn around and exit the property. And then this shows 20 conforming spaces per current zoning, relined and reshaped with a little bit of a sliver of pavement added on the left-hand side, just to have a 24 foot aisle width. We're not anticipating doing this. Um, the preference and what we've been observing is the angle parking and relief from the non-conforming status it is today is the best way to kind of maneuver and operate in this parking lot. Um, but we could restripe it and keep the parking spaces within the existing footprint of the pavement to meet the criteria for 20 spaces. Um, the nine spaces that we're talking about for adding the second story are only really to keep the basement, the basement active. So we have enough spaces for the first floor remodel, adding the second floor, that's, that's 20 spaces. And then the nine that we're chasing would just be kind of what, what's needed for the basement to keep that active also. So um, nine spaces, we're going to seek relief off the property, off the property. And then so when you, some of you may have been involved with the parking um, improvements around the entire area, the electric vehicle charging stations in the center parking lot, the bicycle racks outside the post office. So um, they're a willing participant in the community effort for sustainability, um, as opposed to sticking things in a private lot. You know, using and, and participating as a community within the central area for that parking and those um, sustainability items is is um, what we're hearing from staff as a, as a potential benefit for the community needs. Uh, so all we're seeing again is in the back of the building, an expanded platform for the AC units and the generator. 
there was a dumpster there before, so we provide a dumpster behind the building that's outside the floodplain. Um, it could go in back in the corner of the pavement, but it seems best to put it where it was before, just behind the building outside the floodplain. And then on the right-hand side, we are going to move that current basement floor entrance further away from the edge of the water of, of the of the brook and have a side porch on the right hand side and then just um, upgrade roof leaders, et cetera. So if you can, that's the overview of, of this work. Um, one other aspect is there's five existing roof drywalls, two on the left side and three on the right side as you go in. Um, each has each downspots going to them. Uh, they're currently clogged, the, the roof leaders. So we need to basically dig up and replace each pipe. Uh, and then we would refresh the roof drywalls and maybe connect the pipes together to them so that there's a little more capacity and we keep that recharge active for the roof drywall. So the roof will continue to be recharged. So, and there'll be no change to the footprint of the roof in the outside the floodplain and outside of the buffer zone. Um, only other thing that we're fearful for is the behavior of the stream over time. Um, we're reliant upon those downstream to maintain their aspects so the water doesn't back onto our property. We're currently seeing that occur now from a couple of failures of a, of a wall downstream. Um, and with the everyone has to maintain and do their part along the way to keep it cleared away and, and flowing properly. So um, that's the overview. We're just gonna, Tie the sump pump in into a dry well to the right, just outside the floodplain, and and then um, and have some pretreatment for that also, and then upgrade the vegetation to the best we possibly can. And um, the next page, Delia, please. This just shows you the proposed flow layouts that you can see that there's no change to the actual or expansion of the current building. The lower levels of, on the left hand side, you can see the dash stairwell on the exterior that's being removed. In the middle is the, is the new first floor level where you can see the porch on the side, right hand side with the stairs. And then on the upper level, that's the new level, which would be all office space for the professional office. And so we're not we're working within the current footprint. We're not expanding it in the riverfront area at all. And we're just upgrading it around the perimeter of the building per the building code requirements and maintaining the handicap accessibility from the back space to the front door. And one more page, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is our erosion control plan. Um, Mark can speak to this, not tonight, but uh, basically when you're adding a second story, there's some free space that you'd like to have around the building itself. So. When I designated the hatched areas, I do recognize it's in the 25 foot to 50. It's all within pavement. Uh, so as far as any stockpile materials or, or, or other structures, I was trying to provide a level space of about 30 feet of pavement around the back of the building. So if there is staging or setting up of a crane or something like that, you could have some space to work in that area. Obviously, that can be worked out as well. But the goal is to maintain the trench as active, protect that, hay bales on the left and right and then working to minimize any type of disturbance of surface, but um, repave and patch the areas that we have to. And then um, on the top right-hand side of that page, um, I cut and pasted the detail of the original drain tre trench drain, uh, just right there in the top right. The stone trench drain detail, when that was dug out, basically they removed a two foot fingernail pavement on the on the outer edge, provided a two foot wide stone trench with some filter fabric with instructions to maintain it. There was some boards put in place to keep people from going any closer to the wet ones. And you see that little bit of a berm detail of that little bit of a stone. So it is actually working. It's separating and keeping the parking lot runoff in the stone trench, and then it's keeping the river from backing up onto the into the pavement. So it, it is an effective way, an improvement above what was there before, which was the pipe and the catch basin straight into the water. And so the landscape plan is the next one, Delia, and I think that takes us to the, the tour for tonight. So Deb Howe, um, we went to Historic and she has this landscaping plan. One is to replace the stump with a new tree. Her belief is that the other major tree to the right one of the limbs is damaged and she's recommending replacing that. 
um, where she has additional plantings proposed. And in that area that I talked about being some flooding in that area, she's has a mossy, mossy turf proposed in the top left of that area. So that that area is half on the, the, the grass berm you know, along the back of the gravel strip. And then that area is just, it, there's some fluctuating water that might be there for a few weeks at a time. So um, if there are more plantings that are adjusted to that area, then on the right hand side, it's a very defined berm. Um, it's a little bit steep on the back side. So uh, that is has some pretty good strength as far as keeping that berm intact. Um, it's just when you, and you get closer to the bridge and it flattens out, that bank is a little more sensitive to um, the water. And you know, keeping that bank wet all the time is kind of a little bit of a del you know, delicate area as far as we deal with future plantings. Uh, the highlighted Pole lights uh, located on left and right in the back. Um, we'll review that further with planning. Um, there are two street lights to the left of us along the path that the town maintains. Um, one, the one closest to the bridge is, is out. The other one's a newer LED. And um, so those are all her plantings, et cetera, that you can look at further um, within the inner 25. As you scroll down to the front, it'll just show you the new the new side entry. Um, um, the utilities. She copied the, the the pavement stripes that were on the original plan. Uh, we'll basically um, resurface that and restripe it as the best we can, and, and we can trim off any pavement that um, if it is of benefit to the resource areas. And then it's just um, all the plantings around the building. You know, it's very narrow areas to, to work with, mostly ground cover uh, because of uh, snow storage, et cetera. And, um, and that's that's the overview. You know, it's Thank you. That's nice and thorough. Appreciate it. Um, just a couple quick questions, just to start off with. Um, all, all the plantings in the back are they native species? Uh, I, I the, you know, I'll let Deb Powell speak to that. I know she she may or may not be on the Zoom meeting right now. Okay. Um, she was supposed to be on, so I think she's. Again, the, you I know, think the intentions are to have them. If they're not, then we could, you know. Make some adjustments if it's so, so. It does seem like the 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 planting focus has been around the building, which is you know, typical. But with the you know commission's interest being in in um, you know preserving in the rear, and protecting in yeah. the rear, yeah. um, and I you have the comments that you know staff has um, looked at that, and it was just to provide a robust. Mm -hmm. um, planting plan. So to provide the area of the area, you know, in that 25 foot no disturb zone adjacent to the brook. Um, oops. Right. She does show, you know. Yep. So there are some plantings shown here, but we need to know what the area of that is that's being replanted. And then, um, I mean, mossy turf, we don't know what that is. I mean, there's no species. Uh, that are proposed. Ask, I... Yeah. But but really, it should just be some a pretty robust native, you know, that should be a good riparian corridor. If there's interest in having some access, I think that's fine. But, you know, th this doesn't seem like a, you know, really a, an improvement to the, you know. Yeah, you can have access, improve it if you're not yeah. plant it. Yeah. I think there's some, you know, some preference, some ideas of having a little bit of a multi-purpose area. Maybe if it's staff or someone was going to sit out there or whatever, you know, just to kind of be, you know, it, something of that nature, but we can look at it further. Mm -hmm. So what are you asking for there? What would so you to provide to a robust... Um, a robust mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> it means um, to, to beef up the plantings in that area so that it, it provides... So okay. Yeah. With yeah. native. With native yeah. plantings, yeah. Can yeah. I allowed to say anything? Absolutely. <laughs> you get, you you just identify yourself and address for the record. 80 Hill, 88 Pine Point Road in Stowe, and I'm one of the owners of the building. Mm -hmm. What we're planning, and I'm really excited about this, it's um, sort of like, um, what word am I looking for? Sod, it's rolled, but it's um, blueberry bushes. And they they're in Maine. And they cut it and bring it down and roll it out. And for the first couple of years, it's a little bit of maintenance pulling out the weeds. But after that, it just, it's very naturalized and it generally has ferns and other kind of stuff in it. 
I just think it's the coolest sounding stuff, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, again, if you could just um, you know provide on the landscaping plan, you know that that information, so certainly staff can look at it and yeah. and, a, and a planting <laughs> schedule. So you know what the what the numbers are, what the area that it's going going to cover, what type of blueberry is this high bush, is it low bush? You know, it's, right. So just to provide that information in a schedule, so that you know it's it's clear what is being. She does have a planting is, list. Um, to, if you care to look at it now, we can just well. So the it. planting list um, is, as I said, it's primarily for around the building, and what's proposed there. I mean, we need the areas, okay. so the square footage, so we understand what the coverage is going to look like, um, and then the you know the species and the size and, and all that. And what about in? And you, um, I think you're right. I think that that list of. I don't think it has as much detail as we need, and we can talk about that. Uh, sure. Offline, and then I'm really sorry. Um, the fate of the tree to the right, uh, you know, a stump is obviously easy to replace. Um, those, have you looked at that tree or maybe? So are you talking about this yes. one that's, yeah, which, I mean, that's a lot more than a stump. This no, the here? other one's a stump. There, there was two trees before, one's yeah. a stump now, one's a tree that has a limb that's um, recommended to be cut down. Yep. Yep. Um, and I mean, that's, that's fine. There's no also okay. some in, invasives in there that need to be managed. So Certainly. there's some big like, buckthorn and some multiflora and some bittersweet. Um, so we need a, a a plan that addresses how those are going to be um, taken care of, and then you know where those are removed. Then something else would go in its place. Certainly, yeah. Yep. Dave Crossman had looked at that before when he donated it, so we'll have him go back out. Mm -hmm. I have one question at the back of the building. I just wanted to understand. So I, I thought I heard some sort of deck area, but it looks like it's a is it a concrete utility area? I think the deck is to the right. Yeah. Um, well, there's just the a right. and is it at ground level or is it part of the second floor? No, it's all ground. So right now Somewhere. on the back of the yeah. building, there's just a first floor entry. Um, oh, the back of the building or the, or the right side? So it's sorry, the back. Of, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't, yeah. So the back of the building right now, there is a is a concrete pad with AC units on it, which is that okay. footprint there. That's going to be stretched out to include a generator pad, and then right. we'll put put the dumpster over there also, um, which was it was there before. It's, I don't think it's shown on her sketch, but as far as it, it's it, all there before. That, yes, it is. It's um, the reason I was just interested is because is that in the Flooding area, potential just flooding area, the just outside. Okay, okay. The front line. Oh yeah, just outside. Right. Okay. Thank you. So what about the snow? The snow. Where are you gonna pile up the snow? On the pavement, where <laughs> where it falls, just um, in a windrow, you know, around the edges where it, where it falls. You know, it's um, we have a fence on the right hand side. And it does get pushed down into the back of the property. To the back of the property, down towards twenty. No. Yeah, so so it can't be within fifty feet. Yeah. Well, it's um. I know we always it's a pre-existing non-conforming condition that's been there since 1950. We're required to have 20 spaces on the property, and from my observations, the snow plowing is in. The, it's already in the buffer zone, and it's going to you know we can't push it outside because then it'll block a driveway. So it might be snow removal. I mean, that's what that's what they're doing mm -hmm. across here, and that's been there for a long time. Um, but you know, as as times change, and you know, more information is you know. Uh, so made the current proposal is to to have it remain on site to the extent it can, and if it starts to you know block the spaces, then they can be removed from the property. Um, just a question again. I was a little confused about what you said about the spaces. Did you say you're reducing the number of spaces? Uh, no. So it's um, when we're there's a demand for increasing parking when we add the story per zoning. We're providing, we're okay. asking for relief from that and utilize the public parking spaces that are on the street. The parking requirement is going from 20 to 29. 29. And you're proposing to keep 20. 20. Yes. But and you provided seek, seek relief for the night. And, and are you have, keeping 20 or are you going to 19? I thought you were 18. Uh, we, 18. I mean, what I, that iteration was showing, you know, kind of an, a couple ideas of what, mm -hmm. what it could be. Um, and with that layout, 
takes away a couple spaces, which which isn't ideal, you know. So it's um. It's it's interesting it's because yeah, it is it planning. is for planning. planning, but you know, with a realtor's office, to have um. Twenty nine spaces required is you know, and with all the office <laughs> parking, I mean, it, it is. Maybe it's just that the zoning, you know, regulations need yeah. to change to yeah. reduce the amount of parking. But I think there's, you know, a good argument that can be made that that's, you know, it's not realistic to to require that number. Um, <laughs> people don't go to visit realtors' offices anymore. I mean, there's there's a lot more online stuff, and you know, people are out in the field, and you know, right. I mean, so regardless what relief the planning board is willing to give you on parking for in based on usages. I mean, from our perspective, it's the amount of pavement, right? right. And so we're mm -hmm. still proposing to keep the same amount of pavement that's going to yield the same amount of runoff to the resource area. So, so it has to improve under the stormwater. Right, right, right. So that's right. the yes. question so is like, what are we doing to improve right. that runoff and the six inch trunch? I got a little confused between the uh, existing versus the proposed condition for that mm -hmm. trench that's right. staying yeah. exactly as it is so but i showed I mean, expanding yeah. it the best i could around the along okay. the edge um, yeah so and i, I guess i'm actually, confused too exactly. rich because i mean there was a number of different plans that were submitted mm -hmm. um right so we played um <laughs> autocad fun in the sun with um but i mean just you know, in terms so of we've you got, know, Lay, you know, lay English so, explanation. Is that trench being expanded? Is it staying exactly as it is? Is it being um, re, you know? So our starting point was is right yeah, here. Was right. was maintaining it, okay. and then expanding it up to the left side to so that closer to the walkway paper, on the left hand side. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, that's our starting point. If the board, the planning board, and ZBA agrees to relief from parking spaces, um, we've provided a couple plans to deal here in, in the town planner. You know, for instance, I can uh -huh. get 20 spaces here just like this. Yeah. And that's the extra green space or extra trench or recharge areas that you could right. benefit from. Right. Which is uh, not not preferred with putting all this yeah. new parking. Into, so there was four there right. before on the loop, outer loop, which is so right now there's two and a half spaces in the 25 foot. So you. Um, this was this was the other here, one. But there's there's another another one that. Per, Sent in, I don't know how many plans came in on this, but there were a number of plans, and there right. was an additional one that showed, uh, um, I can't remember if it was 18 or 20 spaces, but it was an improvement. Um, it was greeting up more of the 25 foot of the So zone. this one was 18, just to show that if you start to trim off back and, and loop around, that's in only a park in the middle. It's 18 and doesn't meet the 20 that's there today. So. Um, we were encouraged to see if we could sneak a couple off the side and ask for some relief. And so, when are you scheduled for planning? Uh, we'll we'll get on their agenda um, and um, you know we'll just work in tandem with with your your hearing schedule. Right. So I mean I I think I mean we can go through the rest of the you know um, comments. Yeah. Um, but I think in terms of moving forward that you need to go to planning and understand what they're going to require right, before then, right. we but, start because but but in terms of giving guidance like yeah, right, obviously so it's, it's up to yeah. you and in, in, in Delia and in planning to you know coordinate the schedules but yeah we're we're looking for an improvement in terms of protection for the resource area. Right. And yeah to the extent you can cut back the parking, you know, I, I don't know how the town feels about that or how planning feels about that, but to the extent that you can extend that six in that six inch trench and um but also provide some additional buffer on the inside of that mm -hmm. to absorb um you know runoff and things like that before it gets to that trench that's great from our perspective right, right. so if we could you walk know, so if that's yeah. the so having that kind of consensus of the the preferences from the commission as we move forward to yeah to have that memorialized that would be awesome you know excellent to... I, think, I think you know i mean it's pretty clear mm -hmm. what the oh no i know that just to uh, have yeah. as much pavement so taken will, out of um, 25 maybe it just comes from the point yeah. right so yeah. Yeah. um like for instance with that tree removed on the right now that's more of a hump if that gets lowered down then we could maybe do more of a rain garden such as like near the train station um there's a little it just oh, drops yeah, down yeah. You you mean inside the trench yeah yeah so you could turn that trench right. press it a little further and make it more of a bowl mm -hmm. um so that we're not we're actually increasing storage and treatment so that would be that would be in on this thing that would be on to the to the right hand yes, side of the 25 right. foot zone, like, right? Like where that right. green is. Right. The, the green and then where the tree stump is, we could lower that area oh, there, over yeah. there. 
and mm -hmm. so it's almost like okay you're learning each okay what are my limitations i can now the tree's going to go okay here's a couple options daily that we can look at and work in unison with the planning staff and, and improve upon it and just an observation i don't i this is a planning thing it doesn't i don't know if it helps but you said you, you were required 19.2 and you rounded you round to up. 20. Yeah. Why did you have to round up? I think you always I round down. You have a minimum requirement. So if the minimum requirement is 19.2 spaces, you can't say I'm proposing 19. Right. Uh, I mean, unless you okay. get relief. Thank you. Right. Uh, okay. You have to round up. Hmm. Well, you have a minimum. It's really it's 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 the minimum requirement. It's not really rounding. It's the yeah. minimum requirement. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand. It's the rounding bit that got me. Just yeah. Too many parking spaces that I need to for the rest of my life now. Um, so okay. what the reality is with everyone using this property over 50 plus years, mm -hmm. slightly angled parking is better than having 90 degree on the other side yeah. just to right. sure. pick up some green space. We need the travel aisles and, yeah. and so radius. just keeping that same footprint and maybe narrowing things by a half a foot and um, restriping the handicap uh, in a loading area, we can do improvements in that 25 foot mm -hmm. and work with that area where the tree's going to be removed. And I think the commission will be see an improvement in that area. Great. Just out of curiosity, you mentioned that three inch berm. Is that a is that a grass berm or a stone? Yeah, it's, berm? You know, it's just grass. It's just a grass. It's berm. A subtle, and that's held up after all these. Um, it's more of a, so the you go the right hand side of the outer like this outer side is yep. strong because it's more of a higher point, but on the left hand side where the the, the mid walk that's kind of flattened yeah. out. Um, I mean, I used to park illegally there to go to First Parish, and you know, you it's muddy in the spring, and mm -hmm. kids are tramping all over it. So let's say it's well, Files and Hail Mary. We get back to the next yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we're right. That area is we're a neighborhood. Yeah. The neighbors before worked with each other where you have electric lines in the ground going back and forth between properties. You're sneaking some conduits over there. That's why the water has that exit lane before it goes to the bridge onto the property with that little paved swale. Um, that protects the bank from eroding. It's not our runoff, but it's, it's more from the abutting property. So, um, so and, they, and they have an easement, I assume, coming across yours, or it's just a cooperative? I think it's just a neighborhood. We're all good neighbors over uh, there in the, yeah, in the past, yeah. and, and um, it's we both share and benefit from each side of that with utilities or that runoff. So, um, to the extent that that continues, um, it's we're not looking to change that or, or alter that that um, original decision for that, which is on the left side of that post rail fence that you see. It would be helpful to take a look at that farm in the future, though, because if the stone trench is supposed to be doing its job, it's got to stop there, mm -hmm. and if it's crushed down or you know just trampled on over the years just if you give some thought about how to make that a little bit more durable sure. going forward oh, that is working properly it's it's um but especially if you're talking about you know mossy turf or whatever like it, you yeah. know it depends on what that is if it's going to be something that's going to be you know more like a low blueberry bush that people aren't going to be tempted and to walk over. We'll make sure there's a grass strip in between the stone yeah. and, and that, that that landscape up yeah. there. I'm sure the trench picks up 90%, but if there's yeah. a real storm surge and it's yeah. sheeting yeah. over yeah, that, yeah. it would be nice to have a that kind of stop, if you will, mm -hmm. or as much as you can. Certainly. Thank you for that feedback. Um, any other comments from the commission? Well, a quick question. Given that the bridge is there, and that only has that one opening. I would think that area must get much more flooding than the rest of the, the Millbrook area, does it? Or not? I, I have never, never known that to be a pinch point. There were some stones that had fallen in behind, um, like the the barber shop. The yeah, I don't shop, And in fact, right? it's a drop down, straight down, down it's a straight, straight the concrete right. embankment there. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Stone yeah. And those, Stone but I, I don't even think those were necessarily impounding water. Um, I mean, I think the water just rises. I don't yeah. think anything is yeah. constraining it. I think it's what okay. Rich is saying is it's more downstream. It's just you know. where I mean, it, it oh, doesn't yeah. have much further to go before it oh. hits the river. So when you're on the back side of the bakery, yep. you know, that, that the culverting the road, it, that's, that's filled up to the top. And it's just and it's uh, confined. So you're, you're saying that that is there's no freeboard under that. Correct. During a non-storm event. So it's flooding. D you know, during a what? A regular regular monthly no it's rain regular right filled up huh? and it but then it, then it dropped down so there's different things occurring you okay, know so maybe i mean that's does that show on the flood maps as a as a drop in the flood elevation yeah, there's a drop right there's, there's yeah. a drop between yeah. okay. the side and it drops down on the other side of main street up. 
but then it does so it does recede down further. Yeah. So I, well, I guess what I'm saying is it, the behavior of it is is not just always consistent. So I just wanted to observe my bank on uh, right. that area in the zero to twenty five right. foot, so that we had a, a good historic right. observation. Right. 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 Okay. Um, any public comment regarding this application? I've seen it. Okay. Oh, just one more thing, sir. Uh, so sure. the, we're proposing two pole lights for safety reasons yep. for the people in the access in the parking lot. And then we have a borrowed light on the entrance because the neighbor next door. And with historically, they want to keep it a little bit darker than typical mm -hmm. because you're transitioning in that area. So um, if there's any feedback on that or just we'll work with planning staff on that, you know, just. So, so where, where, where are the, I mean, we saw the those plan. Two. They're outside the 25 yeah. foot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we had more. The architect had more lighting, but then we reduced it and scaled it down. We it earlier historical. Yeah. And so um, we're just just going on record that we've lessened the amount of lighting and we're looking, you know, to the extent that everyone is in agreement. Um, that's a baller light there. So it's, it's all motion sensor and things of like that nature and they'll shut off at night. Um, yeah, yeah. And then those two there, just when it starts to curve. So you can see on the yeah, I mean, definitely With not. Their dark the sky compliance. Exactly. Full right. Cut off. Yeah, right. And now we use a motion sensor. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Except right. that we can. That's yeah. that's encouraged. Yeah. No, that's all good with us. <laughs> okay. So those. Yeah, as long as they're outside the 25. So it's also at 25 on the right, just like 26, 27 yeah. feet, yeah. and then the 50. So um, those are the two, you know, 14 foot high or whatever, similar to what's already in the street. So mm -hmm. great. That's um, anything else? Very thorough. Thank All right, sounds good. And so you're good continuing to. So just just to confirm seven. that there there was there were comments that I had provided you with in terms of um, the, the riverfront uh, performance standards. Um, o and M plan. O and M plan. Yeah. Twenty five foot, no disturb zone waiver request. Um, stormwater management just to sort of update the O and M plan. Um, Stockpiling outside. We talked about the other one, stockpiling so storage in the landscape. Yeah. Okay. So, so you'll get that to us for the next iteration. I, I do think, I mean, so, so we're seeing a new presentation that we haven't seen, some of the same information. Um, but we got five plans yeah. with the filing. And I think it would be helpful just to get it down to the landscape plan and, you know, your existing. Conditions and proposed conditions. You could do that on one plan, mm -hmm. you know, if it's or or do it on two if if you prefer. But to have five plans, I think, is just confusing. No landscape, right? Right. Right. Yeah. right. Very good. Okay. And, and you guys want to come back twelve seven? Mm -mm. They need to go to planning first. So, cool. so you don't have a planning date yet? No, that'll, okay. that'll be all scheduled and worked on. Um, so we wanted to get to here and get some additional feedback. Okay. So that you know, we can. Um, basically focus on the triangles on both right sides as far as increasing the trench and the, the treatment parts. And okay, so you'll let staff know once you hear from planning yeah. and kind of sync up on that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So 12-21 is the next meeting after that. Do you good. want to continue yeah. to that? Okay. okay. Good to see this being redeveloped. I was on the planning board when we were looking at the zoning changes for <laughs> oh, the business oh, number two. Yeah. Oh, we're Snell. excited. Yeah. yeah. Long Good. time and coming, I think. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people. It's nice to see, it's nice to see you too. Yeah. Did you, did you consider residential on the second floor? I think there was a lot of hope when we did the zoning changes that people would build mm -hmm. residential. Mm -hmm. okay. You have tenants for commercial these days? Residential. residential. Well, well, no, limited one business one number one. two allows combined business residents. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Anyway. Well, you never know after we get done with the building, we That's have right. to live there. <laughs> It seems like there's a lot of commercial development these days, or commercial estate, COVID. Mm. Not as many people. Really? Uh, we were finding a lack of commercial in the area. Well, thank you for us. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank All you. Thank right, you. Well, very much. Back. All right. So I think with that, we're on to close an issue. Yeah. And we, uh, so Palm Realty, um, the floodplain is still being worked out between the applicant and um, Public Works. Um, Public Works just got the revised information or some clarified information uh, this morning, so they'll have their review by uh, within the week. Sure. Um, so this will be on the 12-7 agenda. 12-7, and yeah. we're holding on concrete accounts. 
Concord Academy, um, I suggested that they wait until they go to planning to get a recommendation. Just to make sure. Just in case anything changes. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Then they won't have to amend their permit if we close here. So mm -hmm. we're fine with that. Okay. So that's off as well. So now we're on to COCs. Okay. You know, we've got a bunch of them. We do. So Lachulis, uh, tear down and rebuild. Uh, Lions um, was an addition and some driveway work. Um, Weissable was fiber optics. Chase Bank um, was the new bank uh, there in West Concord. When Stanley is off, because we, we still haven't figured out how that goes on the agenda, but we have already issued. You have already <laughs> issued that <laughs> certificate. Sure, that so that's that's off. And um, let's see, Acres was a septic. Um, I think I skipped one. So we're helping Okay, Silver Hill Association. So that was for oh. pond management oh. um, for an old permit. They now have a new one, but they never closed out the old one. Okay. Um, so so that is um, uh, all set to go. I should mention with Lions, this did come to the commission um, recently, and um, I suggested holding off on that because when I had gone out to confirm that that the um, driveway had been removed, there was some material that, you know, it was debris that was in close to the wetlands. Wow. Um, the the property has since changed hands. So it was the builder mm -hmm. who did the work, and when the person who did the site visit initially went out to look at it, they only flagged the driveway. Ah. And I I talked to the homeowner about it, and they were like, I don't know anything about this, and. So I I don't feel like we can put that on the homeowner. And hopefully that. they can, you know, hopefully they, they would like to take that out um, for their own, you know, yeah. sort of backyard improvements. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's the only one that's just a little. Um, it's not perfect. Yeah, okay. a little, little fuzzy on the edge there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Nick, you want to, you yep. want to take that yeah, on? I now? move the issue certificates of compliance for Lachulis 108 Laurel Street, DEP file number 1371256, Lyons 42 Birch Drive, DEP file number 1371528, Wysopo 38 Anisnack Hill Road, DEP file 1371392, Chase Bank 1134 Main Street, DEP file number 1371536, Acres 169 Lowell Road, DEP file number 1371603, and Silver Hill Association, Silver Hill Pond, DEP file number 1371062. Second. Thank you, Sarah. And we'll take the vote. Bill? Aye. Gary? Aye. Nick? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And I am an aye as well. <clears throat> Last order of business. Other business. Delia? Uh, I, I, um, uh, just slightly revise the follow-up letter on the violation for the old calf pasture. Um, we had talked at the last meeting about whether there was any restorative measures. Um, right. I don't think that there's anything that is going to really be, um, you know, it was not an area um, where there's a large violet. There aren't any violets right there. Right. Um, it, I think the hybrid question is is going to be we have to figure out how we're going to manage that if that's how we decide to approach sure. it so i i just revised this slightly um to you know strengthen it a little bit um but i don't think there's anything more that i would advise mm -hmm. at this at this point in time yeah yeah no, I, I i appreciate you giving it a little more direct you know implication of a third strike if you will um, towards the end. You know, the only, I wouldn't want to say is, uh, your letter is fine. I, I saw the draft. One thing which I would like just to mention at the meeting, um, it's it's stunning to me that a person who, who had a violation before wouldn't even call your the office yeah. and say, yeah. this needs, uh, I think this needs to be mowed or, or may I mow it, which of course you wouldn't. I mean, but just knowing that she's already had this problem before, I'm kind of stunned at that. It seems much more intentional than, than, uh, than um than, than an accident but i think your letter's fine i'm okay yeah. with your letter I, I do too but i agree with you bill especially i got that sense in reading her response letter mm. right almost like the town should should have been doing this yes. 
Well, then call you know, and, like, and well, remind us that the town should have been doing this yes. instead of just taking it upon yourself right. and doing it. Or understand why we didn't. Or, or why, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely right. That's what you would have heard. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that attitude, if you will. Well, thank you for putting yeah, that together. All right. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, we are adjourned. Good. Ah, get to sign. Sign, sign. Great. <laughs> I got an extra pen. Yeah. Oh, okay.